Hello and welcome back. So we will now go visit the library. I will check uh, for items we don't need. Creatures of the night. Put it down. A book. This is a fake book. And uh, no, not the record. A book. Memories by Alistair Boleskin, printed in London, A. Machen, editor, 1833. It was during a conversation with G that one first heard of the New England fishing village of I. The area was apparently the ideal place from which to witness unusual phenomena in space. The quality of the air, along with the conjunction of several favorable factors, made one impatient to get started. Having gleaned what information one could from the British Museum, one set off with all haste. One's work on space and comets in particular had met with a warm response, and one thought it judicious to include several original sketches of the phenomenon, sketches which one felt were sure to arouse a great deal of keen interest in the scientific circles of 1834. One refers naturally to the passage of Halley's Comet. Editor's note, Lord Boleskine's memoirs end at this point. Who knows what extraordinary contributions he might still have made had he not succumbed during his visit to New England to dementia, followed by an early death in St. Andrew's Hospital. Okay, we can up now drop the memoirs. And let's go. It's funny, when I open the door, I can see that there is light, but uh, when we enter, there is no light, so... Okay, I will put the lamp on the floor. Drop it. And where is the vagabond? Hello! Ah, there it is. And uh, let me search this place. And there is a mechanism to trigger. So we will use the false book. No. Pick it up, Carnby, and use it. No! What am I doing? <clears throat> okay. And the room seems like a sacrifice room or something. A dagger. Parchment and second one and the book and second book. Okay, so I took only one dagger because uh, a clue will reveal why that one uh, with the curved blade. So let's read the parchment. The Sacrificial Dagger, Otto Stern, Lumina Books. The importance placed on ritual sacrifice is constant in religious cult practice. Propitiating the gods is a theme common to many religions. The Old Testament affords many examples. Primitive polytheistic belief systems integrate sacrifice in their rituals as part of the recurrent process of reaffirmation and, naturally enough, group cohesion. The members of their social and religious community come together in an act of purification and atonement. It would be erroneous to imagine the act of human sacrifice linking priest, offering and God, C.F. Manzetti, Stone Courts, as anything less in a vital focusing of the group's faith. The act also ensures the continuing appeasement of the god, but only if practiced by a recognized officiating priest using the appropriate instrument. Studies made concerning primitive religious groups bear witness to the central role of sacrifice in living ritual. 
My own work in the field of ethnopsychology brought me into contact with a sorcerer living in the region of Arkham. He introduced me to the rite of steel, linked to a ceremony known as adoring the black goat of the woods with a thousand youngs. The god being adored is known as the vagabond. Okay, folks, uh, vagabond, it was that creature that followed us through the library. Here, the dagger's roll, which allows a life breath to pass from one dimension to another, is essential. The Vagabond is a frightening figure, being able to move where he wants and to kill those who have displeased the Goat Guard, for whom he acts as a go-between. The Goat is clearly a fertility god. The priest, having spoken the invocation, must choose the appropriate dagger for the sacrifice. The knife with a sinusoidal blade that must be dipped seven times on night when the moon is full, in water that has been distilled a hundred times, will be laid aside, since it would send the vagabond back into his own dimension. See illustration. The priest will rather choose the dagger with a curved blade. That is more appropriate for slitting of the lamb's throat. This act transfigures the sorcerer priest and plunges the assembled worshippers into a divine trance. So that was the explanation for the blade and uh, the second parchment. The Book of Yael, Signs of Stone, Eucharistic Rituals of Forbidden Cults, Texts collated by Monsignor Vachet, Legate in the Curia of the Vatican. I think this will explain the item on the table, so let's read it. Numerous devilish cults speak of monstrous creatures called the Old Ones. These supernatural beings are believed to be possessed of powers equivalent to those of the gods of antique religions. Adepts of such cults refer to forbidden literature in order to cause these frightful entities to appear before them. What serious student of folk myths has not come across the names of Cthulhu and Shub Nigarath? It must be said that these creatures wield tremendous power and are difficult to control once they have been unleashed into the world. Those who serve he who goes in shadows protect themselves with signs of stone carved into the walls of houses or engraved on various objects. For those misguided servants of evil, the best protection appears to be that afforded by the sign of the most ancient gods, engraved in Manar stone, a heavy material said to be disagreeable to the touch. The sinful practices of those who fall into such errors can only lead to the darkest of despair and are a mortal danger to the soul. Such monsters as those invoked by these foolhardy individuals are engendered when reason drops its guard. Man is easily tempted into perversion. It is why we must forever remain alert and renounce Satan with each breath we take. His ways are infinite in number. Okay, so that's explained, uh, that explained uh, the stone on the table. It will protect us from those creatures. So now we can drop those two parchments. Uh, we can pick up the stone. Tal talisman. I don't like those sounds, but... <laughs> 
Okay, I will equip myself uh, with the sacrifice. Sacrifice. Mm, excuse me. With the danger. <laughs> okay, there it comes. Okay folks, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.